G'day and welcome to the Infronters. Uh, I'm XQ. Today I'm joined by Astropub or Paul and oh. Algrid. How are you boys doing? Recovering? <laughs> well, think... Since we're both we're we're both teachers at the end of end of a semester or the end of a, a grading oh. period, we're both we're both we're both celebrating and recovering. That's that's what we're doing right now. That's, that's, that would that sums it up in a nutshell. <laughs> I myself are barely holding under my voice at this point, so I'm trying to be a little bit quiet today and uh, and not lose it because I, I still got a very much a hyena laugh. I have uh, not had a chance to really kind of stop, unfortunately, but hopefully it'll yeah. slow down a bit now. Uh, and this will probably be the only video we have to make for Alien Week, so hopefully um, I, I can slow down a little bit after that. So That's right, we're. Uh... Uh, so before we Go get on. started, um, I'm going to uh, hashtag Jade in the comments below for your chance to win an F7A upgrade. Uh, we are getting closer and closer to giving that away, by the way. Um, fortunately, Eric Lanzo is no longer with us, um, and uh, his uh, mate is looking to give away his uh, former mate's ship to a, to a good home. So yeah, leave a hashtag Jaden in the comments. All and right. Don't forget to subscribe as well to oh, yeah. be in the like, running. Like, subscribe. Do the, the do YouTube things, please. We're trying yeah. to get to more subscribers. We're we're at fifteen k right now. Mm. I will I will say the scribes we do have though uh, analytically are very very loyal. You are very very loyal mm. people, um, so you must really like our content, which is good. But I, I guess maybe it's just not for everyone. But hey, we'll see what happens. Interest of time. Um, Spread the love. Yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, we, today we're going to go through the the Raylan, and we are going to go through Alien Week. So I think we'll kick it off with Alien Week first. My mic is in shot. That's terrible. Sorry, unprofessional of me. Um, yeah. So I forgive you. This time, Alien Week. Um, we'll skip the Raylan because we're going to come back to the Raylan. There's, there's a couple yep. of interesting things with that, and um, one of our supporters pointed this out straight away. Uh, it's terrible <laughs> for the price. Um, yeah, so you're basically getting both talons, all the armors for two hundred and forty dollars. And I think the original pack, you guys can quote me if I'm wrong, was hundred and seventy bucks, but it didn't come with the armor, and it was LTI, yeah, yeah. And, or and it didn't come with the skins. This also comes with the skin. So you're getting the skins and the armor for an extra. Whoa. Well, well, that's the crazy thing. You only get one skin, but you get two ships. Yep. Yeah. So, I, at least it's not as bad as a tank. In the big packs, do you get one tank but three skins? Yeah, so that one's a. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, straight off the bat, this is just bad after bad after bad after bad. There is I haven't seen a, a good thing in the entire sale that I can recommend. Um, yeah. But but as always, if it's something that you really like, go get it. But no, you're overpaying for it because it's alien. Um, I suppose, like, to go we, back to that, that first pack, if you look at the price they're selling the two individual Espera's talons at now, yeah. 230, 230 bucks for both yeah. of those, 10 bucks for all the skins and the armour. Sounds mm. good. But then when you look at what they were originally, you go, not so good. Well, the funny thing is, it's almost cheaper to buy it separately. Because the only yeah. thing, it's exactly the same price, but you, you just get, I think you're getting one of the armor sets for free. Um, yeah, it's it's just not a good buy in my book. Um, well, if you're after everything, it, it does work out. But when you look at what those ships were originally to buy, it... 170. There was a pack at, for the two on the time when it came out. Yeah. 170. Yeah. It, so, it just yeah. It just doesn't... <laughs> To me, add up. It just, I'm, yeah. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut off in the the comments in the comments section, which is always gonna be like, hey, yes, but they originally, originally, they said that the things are gonna get more expensive. Mm. The problem yep. is, is that we're gonna probably have the talent in in game to purchase at some point, and <laughs> I don't want to bring bring up the 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 whole prowler thing, the the whole yeah. look at the prowler in game versus yep. the Valkyrie in game, and look mm. at their actual prices, and you'll see how different they are. You pay a lot more for Alien just for for cold hard cash, and they're actually valued in game. So yep. they're, just, they're just always they're always overpriced. You, you can always go back and look at the video where Paul had almost a heart failure as he realized, yeah. "Oh my goodness gracious, <laughs> Mega Prowler is a ripoff." Yeah. yeah. Um, I I think again, if you look at the ones that actually are flyable now, vehicle mm. don't get it. Car to wall, sadly, just can't really do a lot. Surprisingly, yeah. this is the only one I think that's any decent. And even then, it's expensive, right? And this they nerfed one, it. And they nerfed yeah. it. And and that's why I got rid of it because they removed the that they changed the way the the guns were. They're still they're still called the guns 10, used to be awesome. 
Yeah, but now well, they've... It's not just the guns. There's a bunch of other components. I'm not a PvPer, but I know yeah. PvPers know that, that it is it is one of the meta ships yeah. for PvP. But it's still, like, it, for $220, there are better ships for $220. Mm. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, as of today, you can kind of get it for 190 if you do the CCs. We'll look at that in a minute. Talk about that in a bit. Um, Blade, can't recommend it. It's like a Gladius for $275. Like, get... get... I think it's worse than a Gladius for yeah. 275 but hey... As, as Paul just said and had an animism last time we talked about this, uh, don't get pr Prowler because it's not worth it in-game. Uh, it just isn't. Buy it in-game. It's cheaper, significantly. Um, again, mm. 220 for Santokyo actually sounds pretty good at the moment because it's it's obviously going to be better than a Defender. Uh, but again, it's a fighter, so that's such an expensive price for a fighter. And then, Sell your fighters. And, then, and, so and the Santokyo is a medium is a medium fighter, though. It's not a light fighter, yeah. so it should yeah. be better than the than the Gladius as well, and it should be matching mm. the Defender. But it's you, not in-game yet. You no, can guarantee the, the price. No, is the, the, Banu de, uh, the Banu Defender is actually a light fighter algorithm. Light fighter. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, um, so, so what... Because what, CIG's classification system makes no sense. And they are re, uh, <laughs> they are reworking it, um, and I yeah. would say it's more akin to say something like a... a, a uh, I was going to say a, a Super Hornet, but also the Sabre, because the Sabre was originally designed as a heavy fighter. Mm. Um, but we've yeah. also, you, you are getting more into a heavy fighter territory with this ship. Mm. So think Vanguard, the, the RSI Scorpius that they call a heavy fighter, which I think is a joke, and the Hurricane, that type of thing. Um, then something none of us saw coming, <laughs> I joke, uh, the Band of Metchman's jumped to 500 bucks as well. Um, and I, uh, yep. Agra was saying, I'll let you, Say your piece here, I could go for it. Well, I was saying it's no surprise that it's gone up in price. Um, but I actually think if the price goes up or if it goes in size to uh, capital ship, capital ship size, if it ends up being around the same size as an 890 jump, given what it's got in shops and possibly uh, the synergy with the Defender, I can see it ending up being around the same price as a 890 jump. Mm. 890 jumps get luxury tax this will get alien tax and they'll counter each other out but yeah i can see it easily being in mm. that price certainly <laughs> between carrick and 890 what's your thoughts there paul like for me it's more like a carrot price i think it'll be or around that price but what's your thoughts i think it's, it's going to be between an a, a carrick and an 890 mm. i mean the thing about the banner birchman for a lot of people who forget was that it was originally 200 dollars. 250 i got it 250 250 yeah I got so it uh, so, in so concept. It's, so it's doubled. At, you said that earlier. Yeah, you Already said that earlier. Yeah. yeah. Um, I said, I think I said it off camera. But so, and, and, and I don't see it getting smaller. Yeah, it's just, no. it's, it's the, for what it needs to do and everything else, it's, it's going to get, just going to get bigger. So I, I think that reaffirms the fact that it has got bigger. Um, and yeah. we did, we did a video like, is it shrinking? I think that, reaffirms now that it's not getting smaller it's definitely getting bigger um so yeah all right <coughs> let's move on a little bit then um there was this pack as well that i can't seem to find a link from it from that page but it was it's a chairman's club only pack um which is an alien complete pack and the word complete makes this an utter lie because where's the scythe there is no scythe that's right and I think uh, I was saying to the boys just before I started recording, I think if it actually included the scythe, in a really weird way, it makes it worth it. Because scythes are selling individually upwards of $3,500 for just that ship, right? But yep. if, they, if they put it into a pack, a lot more people would swallow the pack and it would bring down the price of the grey market ones quite a bit, I think. That's right. It'd it, it kill it, 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 one fell swoop. It would undercut the grey market. It would make... That packs that massive pack sell like hotcakes. Yeah, but it's not a complete pack because it doesn't have a scythe. It's again one of those hoopas that CIG's marketing department often. Yeah, very much so. Mm. All right, moving on to CCUs. Uh, so straight off the bat, the very first one here as we as we come up is the Talon. Now this can be done for the Shrike or the Talon. Um, You've, and basically, uh, it reduces the price of the ship by ten dollars, right? So it goes from uh, one 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 hundred and fifteen dollars to one hundred and five. Now, the the best CCU options here are these three because they're at a hundred uh, four, sorry, at a hundred dollars. So you got M fifty Cutlass Black Hawk and Best in Show. I brought this myself. I went from the Cutlass Black. I think it's a more 
commonly accessible ship. Um, and that's what mm. I try, what I try to go through. Um, would you guys recommend that one as well from Cutlass Black to, to Talon or Shrike? It doesn't matter which one you go through there. Uh, but that, that's the one I would go through of those four anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, th I think definitely the Cutlass Black is the way to go. E even if you're using a, an LTI token, that Cutlass mm. Black, you know it's always available. Mm. You don't have to worry about waiting for a sale. Then the mm. other one I thought that was the better, so obviously there's two options here for the, this is a $20 discount off the Banu Defender. Uh, I went with a Hurricane because I just think it's easy to get access to. The Super Hornet's only available on Valentine's Day. So yep. uh, the Hurricane is available every six months at the anniversary and at uh, Evictus. So I went for that. Both of those were $5. So for $10, I got $30 saving, right? Now, this mm. puts us in a very – I'm going to cut the, uh, the, the interest here. So we'll talk about the Defender. So that takes a Defender from 220 down to 190. But what makes it really interesting is we're going to talk about the Raelian, and it actually makes the Raelian technically cheaper than what you can buy it for Warbond. By 10 bucks. Now, I know savvy people in the comments are going to turn around and say, oh, but you get the skin with it if you're concierge, which actually makes it the same price. But that's still very interesting that if you're not concierge, you can actually get the cheap. You can get the ship without the skin cheaper than what a person at concierge can buy it at concept. That's the first time we've ever seen that um, for, for quite a while um, on a concept ship specifically is what i'm trying to, to get out here um, and, I, and i think it's only because of those 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 war bond ccus that are coming with alien week and yeah i, I sometimes wonder whether crg marketing have actually realized that or whether they've actually uh, yeah we do this and we'll... yeah so, so 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 just to alliterate if you buy if you have an lti token you buy um a cc war bond to the talon and then uh, you can go from, say, the Talon to the Hurricane, and then from the Hurricane to the Banu Defender. And then there's just a $5 upgrade from the Banu Defender to the Raelian. You can literally get the Raelian mm -hmm. for 30 bucks cheaper. So that's a $190, uh, sorry, $195 Raelian, which is... If, yeah. uh, even better than that, if you've got an LTI token and credits, yep. you can actually get a CCU to the Cutlass Black yep. uh, from your LTI token. Yep. Use your credits for that, and then you do ball bond from a cutlass black to the to the other ships and that will mean spending less money moving on to paints um paul you've been very quiet so i'm gonna let you kind of talk about this because i've talked too much so i'm gonna let paul go here uh <laughs> the paints are a little disappointing i'll say that uh yeah. for for the for these the mm. i like the oculus paint job but just like with all the paints they are just probably over they're, they're not probably they're definitely overpriced for what they are i know you were talking earlier before we started recording about the defender how the platinum is just a like a dark it's it's um, it's literally silver. it's just silver instead of gold switch. that's it yeah yeah it's a color switch for um, 11 bucks is an insane amount of money um uh, uh, at least with the Prowler, I can see see the reason for the price because you know the Prowler is such a rip off anyway. So, <laughs> well, you're you've already ripped it, you've been ripped off. But I mean, and and even that, it's a little bit more artistic. I can see like that, that's that's yeah. not just a, a color swap. Someone went in and actually painted and did some yeah. did some there's, there's some stuff with it. So mm -hmm. it looks it looks a little bit more like done done up, whereas the other ones. But um, yeah, yeah. So like, and all the, these ones are nice if you already have the ships, but. Yeah. You know, like a lot. Of, remember that all these, a lot of these paints will end up in 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 game. You in can game. In the game. So know, that so so that's you. Uh, that's just no. That is US pricing. The skin for the Raelian is literally just a black one uh, available. To it's consoles. just a black one. Yeah. So yeah. Um, live with it. Live without it. But yeah, I just find that kind of crazy. With CCUs, you can get it for the same. You know, for a discount, mm. uh, cheaper than buying it on the thing. All right. Let's move on to the Raelian itself. Um. Your first impressions, guys, because I'm going to tell you mine straight off the bat was, this is garbage. That was my first thought. I went, this is absolutely horrendous, and I'll explain why, but I want to hear from you guys first. What was your very first impression when you saw it? I'll go Under. first for this one, just to show. My thought was, this is interesting, but then I looked at the details, and I'm like, this is a whole B. Yeah. Why is this a $200 whole B? That's, and that's why, I called, that's why I called it garbage. Yeah. Yeah. But that, that was my initial impression. Yeah. Agri my initial was Gundam. It yeah, looked Gundam. like Gundam. <laughs> that, that was my initial reaction. Yeah. Um, even before I looked at the stats, I said, this is the 2019 alien cargo ship Hull B variant that they said we were going to get. And it 
Harry's 320 SCU of cargo, which is around the same amount that a whole B does, and then you go 220 bucks. What mm. the? Yeah. So, so I, I will say it also looks like a gorilla. <laughs> Yes, yes. Oh, with the, yeah, 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 looks, yeah, 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 yeah. Hang on, yeah, it looks and, like Kong, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like Kong and, on top of the this part and here, the silverback <coughs> Yeah, that bit. The the and this yeah that bit right there and the silverback, which was one of my favorite ships for for the 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 the, the, the next great starship contest, uh, which who uh, Elson who 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 did the is now one of the lead ship designers. Uh, so I, like I'm seeing Elson's Elson's uh, <laughs> concepts coming back. Back to, to I'm going to, to get the silver back in there <laughs> in some way, for shape, or form. But all right, so I think we'll start with the negatives and move on to the positives. Because for me, I think this ship has grown on me in the last 24 hours. Um, it does have some big neg negatives around its primary function, though, and its primary function is cargo. All right, so I want to talk about the negatives of the cargo that we've elaborated and talked about um and i think the first one for me is the fact that for a ship of its size right and i'll, I'll go to the, we've got this image here that i was going to show at the end but this is an image that someone's put into sketchfab and it sh literally shows you the size of the ships and one of the things you said paul do you want to say what you said about the height okay so the the height when you uh, take into account the the star wings that pop out is actually the height of a reclaimer which is the tallest ship in game right now. Yeah. Like that, that's flyable in game. It's huge. If you've ever seen a little reclaimer, just massive, um, which makes it a huge target. But <laughs> so it's, I, I just think this ship is not one you go stealth. You're trying to bring stealth in. You're going to light up the sky as you're coming towards the, uh, your venue. It's just, you're such a big target. Yeah. It's de definitely a big target. Um, but yeah, as we get on to some other things, you'll see that there are some benefits yep. to this ship. Um, so negative for me, the also is it actually has these custom cargo pods that hold nine SCU each, and they are triangular in shape. Um, and what that basically means, if you're talking about a, a cargo container that's nine SCU, unlike say the whole B where they talked about, you can actually have bigger cargo containers that can fill up the space. At, like each one of those quarters on the whole B has sixteen uh, standard SCU cargo type. Uh, square containers you can actually have one giant one you're not gonna be able to do that with this ship because it's got custom pods that only go to nine so you're yeah, never gonna, have, have a you're never going to be able yeah. to carry a cargo container that's larger than nine scu so that limits what this ship can carry not only that it actually has less cargo than the smaller hull b right next to it um and also, the, the one other ship I would put into this lineup, you guys correct me if you think I'm wrong, is also the Caterpillar. So when this ship probably come, releases, if you look at the MSR, the MSR was 220, came out at 260. This is $5 more than that at 225. Um, so basically, I'd expect that to be like 260, 265 when it comes out. That means it's only 35 bucks away from the Caterpillar. And the Caterpillar has almost, not quite, but almost double the cargo. Um, to be double, I think it would have to be 700 and it's like five, five, five 75. So it's like a hundred short of double, 125 short of double. The point, the point I'm getting at though, is you've also got the versatility of at the Caterpillar and yes, but as we get on other things, there is some really cool hidden gems in the ship. So when we get on the positives, we'll talk about that. But I think the size of the ship for what it does is a drawback. Uh, what do you guys think? Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. Definitely. I, I'd have to agree with that, but you, you look at the, the size front on. It does look like a cool ship, but you look at the size front on, it's massive. Mm. There's no way you're going to sneak by with this. The size of a ship and the amount of cargo it carries is minuscule. When you look at, um, as I said earlier, you look at the crew size, even though the cargo capacity of this is a whole B competitor, the crew size puts it in as a constellation or a caterpillar. Let's talk about the cost and, a little bit then, that, since you mentioned that. But uh, you, you go first, Paul, because you obviously wanted to say something. Um, what I was, was going to say is is that um, some of the, the negatives, uh, what's important to take into account context is the whole B and the whole C, or the whole C at least, is being worked on right now and is at least on the roadmap for being released. So is this, the end of the year. So, so is this so, by the way, uh, qu first quarter 2021. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. So... But the, so but we don't know how much oh, they've sorry. changed the hull. 
Sorry, first quarter 2022. My bad, sorry. Yeah, I, I am in the same brain space. I know what you're talking about. 2021, 2020 is... You're talking next year, not, you know. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but brain. Um, <laughs> Does not it's been a year. Yeah. Any, anyone who's watching this like like four years from now, remember 2020? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, anyways, <laughs> the... Um, the the thing that we also have to take into account is that we don't know how much changes that has, ha that has happened to the whole series. Mm. They may completely just knock out some of the stuff. They may make some of these smaller to, because CIG may want to make it more competitive with the the, the Raylan. Um, so th that's the thing to take into account. But right now, on paper, from the way it looks, it's just really hard to justify two hundred dollars to a ninety dollar purchase. Yeah. Um, you, you can live on a cargo hauler. Yeah. Or a cargo yeah. hauler. Yeah. Because yeah. you could literally get two of these and it still has half the crew requirements. Because mm -hmm. you can you can run whole bees solo. Well yeah. whole and you could whole bees are a solo ship, they're not I mean. multi cruise ships. Yeah. And if you and if um, you get and if you get um if you want to spend the money to for, for three escorts, that might be better option than than having a, a, an armed cargo ship yeah. because you have more flexibility. Yeah. Like all right, so let's and, let, and, and even just to go back to what I was saying about the size and, and the signature of ships giving off, you look at the hull B, which has more cargo currently on paper versus this. The hull B, if it's coming towards you, is giving off a, a smaller signature. You're mm -hmm. not going to see it as quickly as you're going to see the railing. It's hey, pirates, here I am. Come and get you know, <laughs> Luke yeah. Pinata, Luke <coughs> Pinata. Big, big, bigger target, easy to hit less cargo carried it, it's all negatives in weird ways it just doesn't make sense yeah. um uh, you know again the hercules is roughly the same size once it's folded out but the hercules carries more cargo you know the caterpillar has got a smaller cross section and it carries more cargo so it's it, there's you, you're really buying the ship on the rule of cool mm. and it, it it as i said like i know it's w w once we get through the components and stuff you'll see that it is kind of like a constellation adjacent ship but I still can't justify its price because its role is just so retracted. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and I would eat, like, as Paul kind of just said, I would take two whole beans uh, than, than, than take this. It just, it, 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 I can't justify it. Uh, I just think the people can be used in just such better utilization than used on this ship. Um, I think a lot of people will be standing around and doing nothing. Um, you know, uh, let's talk about the guns a little bit too, because uh, it's one of the first ships where the pilot doesn't have any guns. Um, and I think the very, one of the first things Agra said was about the, the first question in the Q&A is going to be... <laughs> first question in the Q&A will be, can I automate the guns? And we know the answer is going to be, just like every turret in the game, they will be able to blade it. You know that's going to come. You know that's going to be the answer. It's been in like every other one. So, you know... You know and that I, some idiot, I'm going to say some idiot is going to put that question in and it's going to get up over. Yeah. And, and it's and a I, stupid, moronic, idiotic question to put in because you know the yeah. answer. Yeah, that, that's, you know the answer to that. And I also will, uh, with the caveat that I've been saying recently is that CIG is weasel words. Mm -hmm. um, everything in this, this is a concept ship. Everything in here is a vague gesture, gesture towards what they want. It could end up with more cargo, less cargo. It could, those guns could go down, they could go up. Um, the crew capacity could go down, could go up. They could get into it, look at some of the, the spots and go, oh, wow, this is way too, like we have our, our ambitions were way higher. We need to add more space to make this bigger or whatever. They, like the, They could they, even they, get to the point where it's in game and go, oh, the shields are too strong. Let's take a shield generator. In. That's like yeah. I did with the, with with the, the arrow. Um, the arrow. Yeah. yeah. You know, so... so, so that's, that's why a lot of these caveats are like, it's already doesn't look good on paper. And while you could do a lot of these th these different things, ah, uh, really? Mm. <laughs> like it's yeah. it's it, hard it's hard it's, to buy a beware <laughs> buy a beware. Yeah. I think I think for me the number one question I want to know is about those custom pods and how like what can go in them. Are there other size of pods? Like at the moment we only know of two two nines. What if there's a bigger one that's like an eighteen? So that just makes the ship a bit better. But we haven't seen any of that, and we've never seen a concept of custom pods before. Um, mm. So. That, that, that's my main question I wanted that, about those pods because it really does up like anything where that increases or it can carry larger pods really does make the attractiveness of the ship a lot more appealing. But still, I can't at the moment kind of justify it for the price 
when the whole bee exists yep. and the caterpillar and the Hercules and, and stuff like that. So well, even, even the Connie for that matter, you know, for, um, yeah. you look at the Connie just, just to go in the guns, so you, you start to talk about the guns for a little bit. It has the turrets are two size fours. Bad is a constellations, uh, guns controlled by the pilot, two size fours on gimbals. Mm -hmm. Um, so you are in that Connie, you know, that Connie S type territory. So it, yeah, it's, it is one of those. Yeah. And for those asking us about that, the, they actually say cargo nine on every single one of these pods. If you can see it here in this image. Um, I also don't think it's very different from Apollo. I was expecting something dra drastically different. Um, I still think it's very Apollo. Like, like if, if someone had told me from Apollo, I would have believed them. Like, I, mm. I, I, I don't think Attack is original enough, personally. Um, I do like the aesthetics of being able to be a uh, dual human and uh, Zion, but you guys can probably mm. speak to that more than I can, being a woman. Um, I, I, Jail is the one who, who talk about, like, yeah. I don't know how Jail, it's Jail, Jail is our, um, <laughs> our Zion uh, specialist. Right. Yes. So, like, how they sleep, I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. I, I have a feeling Man. that because they're retractable, they may be that Zion sleeps standing up. So, oh, wow. Yeah. All right, yeah, so I'm going to zoom the issue. I'm gonna zoom in here because this is where we get into the positives. And this is where me and Agra were looking this morning and kind of went, what? Um, in that oh, you went, what? Because I was saying, no, it's got large. It's got large. Yeah. Um, yeah, so all these large components. Uh, it was kind Which of weird. Which is weird. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this puts it in kind of a, uh, Redeemer territory because the Redeemer has some, you know, two large shield generators, two large coolers. So I think I now see this ship more like a Mercury Star Runner where it's, it's running from its problems, but it's so big, it's such an easy target to shoot. So I think it also mm -hmm. requires those bigger shields because it's easier to hit. Um, your thoughts on that, guys? I'll just get your two cents. <laughs> What the heck is this? Like, like the, 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 yeah. the, well, because, like, because for, for, for comparison, I believe medium is size two and large is size three. Mm. So, um, this is a weird combination of weird size two and size three components, which I've never really, really seen outside of some very few specific ships. Well, if you look, if you look at the components that are medium, it's things like life support, life support, medium life support. That's basically what a constellation has, I believe. And that means the medium life support system can take up to eight people because we know the Phoenix has a medium life support system and it's yep. got five crew and three passengers. So that's, mm. they can at least support up to eight people. This only has a crew of four medium life support system. So it doesn't need to be long large. Training. No, it's, it's, it's also um, longer range. It gives it yep. a longer range in terms of its, it's like, it was just what they said in, in, in the fluff. Um, the, this is, this is the, this is the first time we've seen shield emitters. Tell, yep. us, tell us about those, Paul. Been... Tell us about yep. those, Paul, because you were telling us you'd heard something about it. I've heard something about it, and based, based off what I've read and what's based off what I've heard, a shield emitter is something that's going to be added to all ships going forward. Now, a shield emitter is where the actual shield is formed on ships. So it is the point source for all of the shields. If you have multiple shield emitters, it becomes uh, more of a redundancy. So you have to take out all of them in order to turn off the shield. But once you've disabled the shield emitter, they cannot re-enable re re the shields. So you have a shield generator, which is kind of like the power source, and you have the emitter, which is the thing that... It's it's a staple of sci-fi. It exists. People who know who, who like Star Trek knows that those know these things. But it also technically will allow the, the CIG to put shields on stations and possibly even outposts because it's it allows it for for non-ships and so non one one large one sounds like a bad idea because you just got one big target you can shoot where if you add three smalls it's a lot harder to take down as an example mm -hmm. and and that also plays into the idea in the past i've talked about the shield you know front shields rear shields and so you'd have two two emitters where one doing the main doing that side, you know the one mm. for one side and um so it'll be interesting to see how they, they do work that, but one large emitter. I imagine it's got more hit points or more more damage capability, ability to take damage, but mm. once you take it out, it's, <laughs> oh, no, we've got no shields. Yeah. So. I just realized that probably came up on the screen, didn't it? Yeah, it did. It came yeah. up on the screen. No. I don't know. Someone sent it to me. I don't know. Anyway, I was like that for a second. It's a problem. I'll delete it. All right. Um, 
yeah, I think that's basically um, well, the tractor beam too. You, tractor, one, of the, oh, yeah. one of the things we're theorizing was that those pods, because they're anti-gravity technology, they might just all come down and lay on the back and that's how they're loaded in. But Paul also suggested that they could all be just be pulled in by the tractor beam because apparently the tractor beam is at the back. Is that, That's what you were saying, weren't you, Paul? Yeah, it's at the back, yeah. It's, I mean, just like the Caterpillar where it has its own tractor beam to, to like load and unload cargo from both sides of the, of the ship. This thing has a tractor beam which allows you to load and unload stuff as well as a docking collar on the back to allow you to dock to other ships or to dock to stations and such. So, so could this be a weird, wonderful pirate ship? Yeah. It's got a lot of firepower. It, 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 it's got a lot of firepower. It seems pretty weak. It relies on shields. It feels very drakey in, the, in that kind of design style. So... It it feels like a hundred and fifty dollar ship that's got alien tax on it. Yeah, that's a very that, expensive alien tax yeah. on it. The yeah. other thing I don't like is also the bespoke missiles. So yeah, shares that in. Kind I, of I don't like. I, I'm not. I'm not a fan of a Connie's bespoke missiles because you're locked into those size two, size one missiles. This you're locked into size one, size two missiles as well, uh, and you've got less missiles than a Connie. So when you're looking at that Connie, that Connie S type ship, less missiles less guns because it's only got the two the equivalent of what the pilot's got and yet you've still got the, the you know they're still man turrets they could have had you can carry more uh, they could have had really cool missile racks up the sides of these fins that would have been really cool rather well than... we also it's also take, it's important to take into account that this ship is not being built for what we have now but what will they we they will have when this is done so you're looking at a ship that is um designed to take advantage of missile operator modes. And um, so that co-pilot seat is more valuable than say mm. a, uh, a Connie. Well, Connie has got a co-pilot as well, but it means that the co-pilot is a lot more useful than just yep. being there. So. Mm. Twilling their thumbs going, what do I do? What do I do? Mm -hmm. And yeah. I, I think any ship that's got missiles, the co-pilot will be an advantage because they'll be able to take control of that. But I still prefer... I'd still prefer a cat, uh, a cutlass or a miss with its missile loadout and the ability to swap out the racks and go, oh, I want a size four missile for this mission, or I want a size, or I want two size threes or, or four size twos or, mm. or eight size ones. When you've got bespoke missiles like on this or the Connie or the Pisces, you're locked in. The Pisces, you, you're stuck with four size mm. one missiles with... With this, you're stuck with 16 size ones and eight yeah. and four size twos. So, so while it's kind of like with its components and that, it kind of pushes it up near a constellation. I think realistically, it's somewhere between. Um, that's why I said it's about 150 bucks. It, it it doesn't quite carry as much as a whole B. It's only locked mm -hmm. into doing cargo. It can't do it that well because they have to be in those pods. Where if you get say like something like a constellation, at least it can go in that whole area. This you're locked mm -hmm. into individual uh pods at the moment um it, it, it's just got some really weird restrictions and then it bursts out and puts these massive components that are bigger than other stuff it, it's a real mishmash of lots of different things and i i don't know where it's going to land because of that mm. but I, I and and sadly i've got to look at it based on the primary function and the primary function is that it's a cargo ship that is limited in mm. the size of things that it can take um, and when you take that into account, uh, the constellations, of, you know, especially if you get the Taurus at $150, yep. like the Taurus is much better than this. You know, the whole B um, at $90, I think is a better buy than this. If you want that multi-crew, I think you want to go into something a bit more versatile. What about you guys? Do you, wh wh where are you guys leaning on this now when you're analyzing it? Wh where do you think it is? Is there, is, oh, you know what I'm trying to say? Is it good yep. or are you better off to go for other stuff? I think where this will shine is long haul trucking. Whereas a whole B is a single seat. So you don't have as versatility of multi-crew, which will probably be a factor and it's pretty small. And if you're going to hire other crew, you're going to have to have escorts and they're going to, it's going to cost more than you think because especially since it's going to go on long distances, this thing is self-sufficient. It has guns that can take care of itself. Size fours are nothing to, shoot, to, to, to snip, snip at. It's also got a much better angle of arc than most other ships with, with their, um, with their, their stuff. I think that's if, if you are a long haul trucker who wants to work with other people, 
this is a fine ship to get. I don't think it's worth the money, but uh, I'm kind of in the boat where very few ships are worth are valued or worth the money that they're valued at by the community. Um, can I throw? So can I, I th can I throw a question at you, Paul? Uh, sure. How does it make you feel when I tell you that the whole C is only thirty bucks more? I mean, I know that it's and it's fourteen percent or like fourteen times more cargo than in in a. Uh, in and that's a multi crew ship. And that's a multi crew ship. Yeah. But the difference is, is that the whole sea also require a lot more cargo to be valuable to pull it out and mm -hmm. use. Whereas the whole B is more of a daily driver kind of, uh, kind of, kind of situation. This feels more like it feels. Well, no, it's probably more like a whole C. You're not going to pull this out as a daily driver. Mm -hmm. This is not a. This is you need to have a crew with it. You know, you need to have, have friends or at least NPCs. All right. So, I think it's probably I, the worst place cargo ship in the entire game. That's yeah. that's I, that's I, my takeaway. I was uh, thinking about the Connie as we as we were talking, and compared to a Constellation Taurus, I don't think this matches up. It doesn't. The Taurus, the Taurus with its doubled cargo, even or, or more, is around you know at least 180, 200 cargo units. So yes, it has less cargo than this, but the pilot has four size four guns. The crew have um, two size two pea shooters. Oh, one one crew can shoot the pea shooters. It does have the, the hidden cargo. Um, yes, the living areas on this ship are better. Yes, it has better shields and better coolers and that. But so much price bigger. difference for twenty, and it's so much bigger. And the price for twenty dollars more average, you could get the Taurus and the Holby. Yeah. And and when you put it like that, yeah. No matter how cool this ship looks, no matter how much it makes you go ooh ah, uh, no matter how much people like me will go, yes, okay. <laughs> no, we're insane. Yeah. Um, it's just not worth it. If if you're certainly if you're someone going, how do I get the best bang for my buck? This is not a best bang for my buck ship. Mm. Do not expect to see us recommend this ship on fix my fleet ever, no. because it's just no, not I worth. It. I will also say that the reason why this is high overpriced is not because CIG wants you to fly it. They don't want you to buy it. The reason why they, 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 they price these more higher than they do is because they don't want to see them flying around. They don't want to see every person flying around with mm. one of these ships. They want them to be more rare. That's, they've said that in the past, that they, they price ships in, in, many, in many cases to ensure that they're rare, more rare. It just doesn't ships. work. <laughs> but it, it, it's just, you know... I, think I feel like the, I feel like we've got a prowler situation in our hands. Like this will come into game and it'll be the equivalent of one hundred and fifty dollar yeah, uh, yep. in game, like, which which will be fine. You know, uh, it'll be the the cost of a Taurus, which will be fine, but not not. not yeah. Before before the show, Algrid said something too that made me think as well. Is this probably isn't the last alien cargo ship we're going to see? So if you want something yeah. that's bigger and grander and stuff like that, hold out for that. You know, yeah, well, um, you, and I'm sure you, the, you know from. Sorry, go on. I was just gonna say, you know, there's probably gonna be a bigger Zion one. Not, not to even mention, yep. you know, the Banu Merchant Man, um, and any other alien races that come out down the track. I was gonna say, even in the the manual or the um the book for the for the um the Raylan, they they talk about uh, Gatak being the producers of many uh, types of uh, ships and their car, you know, and their their variations of of their cargo containers. Um, are a common sight in Xeon space. This is just the first iteration we're seeing of that ship in humans, you know, being available for humans to buy and fly. I don't know. So, how, how much do you reckon this elaborate back scratch is worth? That's at least a hundred bucks. Come on, priceless. Oh, priceless. That, that, that's definitely that's priceless. That's right. It's, yes. Um, oh dear. It's a piece of cultural history right there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. I think with that, we'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up. Um, I'd really like to know what you guys think. Cause I know there's going to be people that just absolutely love this ship. Um, and I know I can, I can see the comments already before I've even read them. Um, but I, I, I often have to look at things on paper. So you've got to look at it on paper and just not look at what the ship looks like. And if you can take yourself objectively out of that, and it is a really hard thing to do because it's a damn pretty ship. Like I really like the big X thing. Like I'm, I have a big thing for those and all the ships they've ever put it in. Like they had it in Eve and I had that ship. They had it in a bunch of other games. And I, I just, I'm a sucker for that big X thing. 
Um, but I have to look at it objectively. And when I do that, it, it, it's probably because of the mishmash, it seems strong in some areas, but you got to remember its primary function is cargo and it sucks at that. It, it, and, and that unfortunately draws it well, back. Especially when you compare it to size, the size for the cargo mm -hmm. does it. It's just, mm -hmm. you go, yeah. Yeah. If, if it had an ability to have like one big open space, uh, AKA like say something like the Hercules and just have a, you know, it could carry some tonks. I could then probably get behind it because then it can carry some stuff and then it can get it down the planet and stuff like that. But when it's these little pods, can't all right paul yep. <coughs> your closing thoughts please that was mine oh i i think i already said it which all is right. yeah don't buy it it's just it's it's bad it's a bad that's a bad deal unless you like it unless you think it's cool i'm not i'm not here to shame you and tell you how to play how to how to play your mm -hmm. your internet spaceship game I, i'm just telling you my opinion how good this school um dereliction if you buy it mm. knowing that i will probably buy it it is just a dereliction <laughs> yeah. okay but um biting game it'll be it'll be certainly significantly cheaper in game. i reckon it's going to be like the prowler significantly cheaper in game yeah uh, and i think the, um, the real it's cost a pretty ship. it is it is a pretty ship it's a lovely looking ship mm. i think but don't buy it both you guys as law people would agree that the cost of these ships in game is not going to be the cost it'll be reputation you'll have to go somewhere and you'll have to do a bunch mm. of stuff to get the rep up to be able to, to purchase it. Um, and I think mm. that's going to be really common with yep. most rare things in this game. Um, and it can and, be really annoying think... if you're very positive and you've got to go to a very negative uh, reputation yep. to get it or vice versa. And I think that's where buying now is is the advantage. It is avoid the grind. Yep. That's 100%. You've got, you've, got to, you've got to make that decision for yourself. Is getting it now and paying the extreme expensive price worth avoiding the grind of building up that rep with that race all right then um if you guys like this kind of content please like this video again leave comments below and let us know your thoughts um don't forget to subscribe click the bell all that type of stuff um if you really want to help us out on patreon helps us buy extra gear stuff like that um he's been astro pub he's been algorithm i've been execute and we'll catch you in the next one. Have a good week, everyone. Ready here. Take care.